I learned so much to really get into the systems with the experts here at TAS Aviation. I'm super glad I came. He highly recommended this course and uh, we uh, can see why after, uh, after coming here. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Between Layers Aviation. I'm Ryan here. So we're in Defiance, Ohio for the next four days. I'm really excited about this trip because we're here for the Twin Cessna Flyer uh, engine seminar for the first two days and the si system seminar for the following two days. November 466 Quebec is going in for our annual inspection here. You can see her getting taken apart already as the, crew, the great crew at TAS uh, Aviation tear her down and do all the things that re are required for the annual inspection. So we'll be giving you some highlights about the seminar over the next couple of days, um, as well as meeting other Twin Cessna pilots and other Twin Cessna maintenance crew here at TIS Aviation. So stay tuned through this video for a lot of great content. All right guys, we got a little break here uh, for the seminar. So I'm coming over back at the 310, taking a look at how it's going on the annual inspection. And as you can see from some of these videos I'm gonna show you here, things are torn apart. So let's take a look. in the cockpit and as you can see panels intact but interior is out we can see all the control cables running down here check in it's probably some of the tension back there on those cables and the back is out as well so all torn apart this is all part of the annual inspection here you can also see uh, the big green disc there is the gear motor so, and you can see that's connected to the emergency gear handle as well uh, to raise and lower the gear in the event that, that gear motor fails. Morning. Morning. All right, so we finished day one yesterday of the Twin Cessna engine system seminar. I think we learned quite a bit about sand cast versus precast, I think it was. Permamold. Permamold. Uh, we went through all the models, the fuel system, the oil system, uh, the magnetos, and the spark plugs. Uh, so today will be day two of that. Uh, my big takeaways are, you know, do a lot of things at the annual inspection, like modify, or sorry, clean and inspect all the spark plugs. Um, check, check a lot of the elements with the oil system regularly. So if you're gonna do oil analysis, don't do it once, do it regularly. How about you? And the other thing is, a couple little things you catch on pre-flights that you should be doing that you don't normally do, 
for vents that go with the fuel system that can cause you to have some issues. Uh, so good safety stuff. Yeah, I think my favorite actually was about the magnetos to do a run up after you land and to check the magnetos because if you have a if you've had a magneto failure in flight, you're not really going to know it unless you're really watching EGTs. And then it gives you time to get it repaired, you know, rather than next time you're going out flying and you've got a dead magneto and that's just going to ground you for the flight. So that was my favorite. But looking forward to day two um, and meeting some more people, more fellow twin Cessna uh, pilots and enthusiasts. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Good stuff. going up on your cylinders or anything to get it extra hot. Any more hot than one. That's normal. Believe it or not. <laughs> That's normal. And those usually tighten up as they warm up though, right? Well, um, once, once, the, once they warm up, they expand. So everything gets all tight. Taking a little break from the engine system seminar day two. We're over in the maintenance hangar here with November 466 Quebec. And as you can see behind me, she's being torn apart for annual inspection. So let's go through some of it with you and see where things are at. All right, so she's up on jacks as you can see right now. You guys are working on uh, some of the tires and the brake pad system over there. Cowling's off as it was yesterday. We've got the nose open here a little bit. Got a whole checklist going uh, that the TS puts on the front here and as they go checking things off and make sure everything's serviced. And we'll come around here, the other side of the nose is open. So, you can see, you know, the interior is still torn apart here with all the control cables. Again, showed you that before, but I think it's always fascinating to see. And then as we look towards the back here, uh, you can see more of the control cables. This back panel I don't think was off before when we looked. This yellow box on the left is the emergency locating transmitter. And then we've got some of our uh, storm scope system there on the right, and the antennas. Uh, and again, then some of the control and, and systems and servos for the autopilot right here. Uh, so pretty cool to kind of look back here and see how all those cables go back. All right, we are starting day three of the Twin Cessna Systems Flyer, or Twin Cessna Flyer Seminar. So we're going to transition to systems yesterday, but recapping yesterday, day two of the Engine Systems Seminar, uh, we learned more about the, the fuel uh, flow regulation systems. Uh, we learned a lot about some hot start procedures and cold start procedures. So a different hot start procedure is one takeaway for me to try. What else? Learn about the difference in injection nozzles or fuel injectors between turbos and non-turboed airplanes. Uh, fuel distributors and possible icing issues you may have in cold weather operation and how to prevent that. Uh, areas where you may have ice forming your tip tanks due to the low points and freezing temperatures and how it may block your strainers and cause problems. I learned about turbochargers 
and definitely a lot on exhaust systems and possible problems that you may have if you develop holes and how you can burn up your airplane, which you really don't want to do. Yeah, so there's, uh, you'll see in the video that there's some exhaust system inspection that we filmed as well. So that'll be shared with you uh, in the video here. Um, so a good thing to do every 50 hours, which is pretty regular, actually. Um, so it takes a lot of beating with those turbocharged systems. So we're looking forward to day three here. It's another beautiful day in Defiance, Ohio. The weather is going to be in the uh, high 70s to low 80s. And we've got a great group of people again. Um, we've got some more people coming in today for the system seminar. And uh, we'll share some of the highlights with you as we keep going through the video. We just are heading into day four of the seminar, but day three recap was really good. Um, we learned a lot about electrical systems for the Twin Cessna series, as well as some of the issues that some of the 400 series mainly have with spar replacements, and uh, all about airworthiness directives as well and the legality of those. Um, okay, big takeaway for me was if you pop a circuit breaker, you should probably just leave it when you're in flight. And there's not really an essential electrical system in 310. I'm over you, Dan. Yeah, the, uh, the other thing is worrying about how to start a plane if you have a dead battery. Do not, do not take off unless the battery's been really fully charged again because you're going to end up in a whole lot of trouble uh, as far as not being able to have any instrumentation or electrical things when you go to throw the landing gear. So that was a crucial thing for the day. Um, the other oh, stuff with uh, how to handle circuit breakers and other emergencies was good. Uh, should be a good day today again. requires me to sit through the seminar. Since I do fly single pilot IFR, learning wise, a lot in the past four days. I think the biggest thing that I got from it is just more confidence. Because I'm just a pilot, right? So like you see things happening and you try to explain it to maintenance, but sometimes they don't know what you're saying and you don't know what you're saying. So it's nice for him to actually explain in detail like, 
if something goes wrong, it's probably linked to this. So if I do see it happening, because we go pretty far away from home, so I'm gonna be talking to strange people, I could at least dictate it. And then we're not grounded somewhere for a week trying to figure it out. But You'll carry those books with you everywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> no, I'm super glad I came. My name is John McKean, and I'm based out of Jack Barstow Airport in Midland, Michigan. I currently fly a Mooney M20J, uh, and came because I've done a lot of long cross countries and a lot of legs going over Lake Michigan, back to Minneapolis where my dad lives, up to Colorado, up at higher elevation airports, New Mexico, just a lot of long cross countries and been thinking of upgrading to a, a twin for added safety and added performance. So that's why I'm here and I think I've gained a, I mean certainly an appreciation for all of the systems and the complexities of the airplanes. Uh, but also an appreciation for what it takes and what it costs to maintain, uh, particularly some of the larger models. It's very interesting. Hi, and I'm Chuck McKean, John's father, and I'm based at uh, Buffalo Airport in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota area. I own a Cessna 180 that I fly on wheels and floats in the summertime, and I came with John uh, to explore the same uh, possibilities that he mentioned uh, as he's uh, you know considering an upgrade uh, from his Mooney to something uh, that kind of meets the mission requirements of the long cross-country and over water operations that he's doing. Had the recommendation from another colleague uh, that's a retired airline pilot that recently bought a Cessna 310Q model and he highly recommended this course and uh, we uh, can see why after, uh, after coming here. Yeah, it's been great. My name is TJ. Um, my home airport is Gary, Indiana. And I fly a Cessna Straight 414 and I came because I love knowledge and I like to learn everything I can about twin Cessna aircraft because I fly for a wide variety of them. And the uh, the, nice, the neatest thing that I learned was uh, a little bit more of the nuance and the detail behind the pressurization system of the 414. I'm Eric Yergin. I've got a Cessna 421B based out of Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, this is my second year here at the seminar. Last year I was kind of locked in on shopping for a 414, so this year focused obviously on the 421B systems and um, got a much more in-depth understanding, uh, particularly the environmental system and the fuel system and feeling a lot stronger. So glad to be here. All right, so we just finished up the Twin Cessna system seminar and the engine seminar. I've got my certificate here and I learned so much. Um, you know, I fly the plane a lot. I've been around the plane a lot my whole life, but to really get into the systems with the experts here at TAS Aviation, and have other pilots tell about me about their experience and what they've learned and their own emergencies and their own maintenance has been really invaluable. So highly recommend the course, highly recommend you come wherever it is near you and check it out. And uh, we're all playing it safe too here with the pandemic. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't do the gear swing on this airplane, but you saw some of that in the video earlier from the annual inspection of uh, November 466 Quebec. And until next time, I'm Ryan with Between Eight Layers Aviation. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and we'll see you again soon for our next flight. Bye now.